America. And I declare world peace in Croatia. Yeah, Can't happy nice anniversary, Rachel yeah. and Pete. Yeah. Well, we have a new advertiser here at AM News. It's Monsanto. This segment brought to you by <laughs> Better Living Through Chemistry. Now, let's go to the third world nation, the land that time forgot, formerly of Silver Springs, Nevada. It's Aaron. Hey, Aaron. What's, what's up? up? Hey, while we're on the advertising bug this morning, Beads Etc. right there in the Reno Town Mall carries Alliday LLC products now. Uh, you can find them. They're right over there next to the pizza parlor, I believe. Oh, and on the other side is the Oriental Restaurant, and you got these wonderful aromas going on in that store. It's unbelievable. Where are you talking about? Beads Etc. Uh, uh, they're carrying some of our herbs, our white sage, uh, uh, They'll probably get some of the petrified wood and stuff we have down the road, but they carry all kinds of rocks. Is that right jewelry. down? Is, I thought that was over at the Costco Mall, not here. You they the right have point. moved right over yeah. there to in the Reno Town Mall. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was really kind of funny when I covered the uh, uh, Taco Fest uh, uh, over there the other day when I was over there shooting videos. I hear this I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I have the bead store over there. Blah 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 blah. And I said hi to her and introduced myself and. When I got home, there's an email in my uh, uh, one of the accounts that uh, about uh, the peacock feathers that I had advertised. So if you need peacock feathers, they're right over there at Beads, etc. Yeah, oh, wow. Breaking news. Yeah, really. Okay, and great gal. Uh, this is how they build. This is how they build their uh, business card. Charles and Laura Jackson and Bo the Labrador owners. Oh, oh is and Bo, Bo, the and store? Bo is great. Bo is great. He'll sit there and, and he'll put his paws up on the counter. They're like, "Can I help you?" Oh. <laughs> Labs, Labs. Give, me, give me a cookie. Labs are so cute, though. They really are. Is he a black yeah, lab? You know, uh, he, I believe he was. Yeah, mm, he was. The whole dog was black. It wasn't a, a blonde one. Yeah, or chocolate. Chocolate lab. Yeah. Shelby, yeah. Shelby in the summertime. When she loses a lot of her hair, you know, they shed for the summertime. She almost looks chocolate, but in the wintertime, she's black. Ah. The, uh, Elian Gonzalez was brought up a little bit ago there when you're talking to Rachel. Here's a quote from him in an interview last October. I don't do anything different than other young people. I have fun. I play sports. But I am also involved with the work of the revolution and realize that young people are essential for the development of the country. He's gotten involved in the, uh, I guess, the Cuban revolution. To, and I guess now that things have uh, uh, eased up a little bit uh, down there with the, the restrictions and trade and all that, the embargoes on uh, Cuba, that perhaps maybe he'll work his way back to the United States. You never know. Yeah, good for him. And, and good for Cuba. You know, I... I it's been too long. We should have done this years and years ago. Yeah, it's, we still uh, can't get a of, cigar over here. I know I can't though. can't get a good Cuban cohiba, but uh, you know they got it. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, uh, go to a uh, uh, <laughs> man. There's a guy and he'll roll them for you right up the road. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Casillas Brothers. Casillas Brothers. But, but the yeah, yeah. The tobacco. He'll, that he'll they, roll it right there on the spot. Uh, yeah, but it's 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 Cuban tobacco. Well, grown it's in America. Cuban seed. Yeah. It's not yeah. grown in Cuba. It's Cuban <laughs> seed. But uh, he has family in the Dominican Republic, and that's where he gets most of his uh, tobacco. They're good cigars. They, oh, they are good cigars. No, I, I have no no problems with that. But there's something about having the uh, Cohiba with the yellow band on it that just uh, it's just extra special. You know, I, I often wonder is is the tobacco coming out of Cuba better than other tobaccos? What made their cigars so special? Well, because it, was and, and then a, because it was rolled on the knees of a 13-year-old girl. Oh, God. <laughs> My. <laughs> That's what I've been no. told. Why the tobacco's so good. Oh, man. Jimbo. Well, I mean, I don't know. Was the infatuation... I, 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 I smoke cigars from around the world, and, and you know my favorite are like the uh, the, the darker uh, uh, leaves. But the uh, uh, I mean, was it the fact that we couldn't have them? They, they, they were technically illegal. Is, is that what the big and fat? I, I mean, even Seinfeld did uh, uh, episodes about Cuban cigars. I think that's part of it. Yeah, kind of like Coors uh, Coors of uh, beer in the old days. In the olden days. I, when I first flew out here from Michigan, 
uh, I, I brought back two cases of Coors, Coors yeah. uh, on the carry-on mm -hmm. and was really upset that I could have carried three. Three, yeah. But, uh, oh, gosh. You know, they you know my three, brother bucks boycotted a bottle. them years ago. What? My brother used to be a huge Coors fan, and then he boycotted them when he found out their CEO supported all the anti-gun legislation in this country. Mm. Yeah, he's kind of a, well, he's that way. Yeah. 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 But my, my, and my brother, he was a Coors beer drinking fool. And then uh, when he found that out, he quit buying it. He's like you, Dennis. He could, nope, I'm not buying their stuff no more. Well, that's, that, that's not right. That's the way I vote every day with my pocketbook. I don't like something yeah. I don't buy from them. Simple as that. Yeah. The, um, I, I don't know if anybody has caught the, uh, uh, the issue with the, the food labeling. I guess they're, they're, they're patting each other on the backs, calling it a compromise. Uh, but when I look at, I, I, I've gone over the bill. It's about 24 pages, and, and why this keeps getting, a, why, why this, this is a question I have to everybody out there, ladies and gentlemen. Just let this sink in. If this bill could stand alone, we, we, it would be different to me. But if there's not an issue here. If these people are not trying, and when I say these people, I'm referring to the corporations involved that are behind pushing the no labeling issue. If this was so good, why isn't this bill standing alone? Why do we have to attach it to like the omnibus uh, uh, bills and, and a spending bill? Why is this bill being attached to anything if there's legitimate concern for no labeling? Uh, I mean, uh, that's you're, what I you're, don't understand. You're, just, you're, you're explaining it with your, with your question. Yeah, but does the population at large understand that? I, I, well, I just, no, I, I, I don't I, get I, it. I'm thinking I just, just the people that listen to America Matters are going to get it. You know, uh, the, the, the thing that I can't really wrap my head around is, again, we have a 9 to 1 issue here. This is what 90% of the people want. Why do our taxes continually pay these people to argue? Uh, what, for the last seven, eight years now, this has been a volleyball going back and forth, and yet 90% of the people want it. That number has been consistent over the entire period of time, yet it's like, it's like I asked that question, who do your, whom do your elected officials represent? The corporations, themselves, the constituents. Not one person has answered that question, the constituents. It's always themselves or the corporations, and perhaps, perhaps maybe, you know, when we talk uh, campaign finance reform, perhaps the FCC should get involved here and set some guidelines for uh, uh, public broadcasts to actually provide time, uh, equal amount of time to all candidates and, and do some kind of, uh, I mean, there's got to be a solution here. So candidates aren't, aren't raising billions of dollars to advertise to well, get their point across. There has to be a happy medium there somewhere. Didn't Obama put something in place like that, that uh, if you're a publicly funded radio station or television station or something like that, you have to give both parties you know, you have to a give, say. You have to offer offer time. You have to offer the say. You know, if there's somebody opposed, it has to have the same amount of time that somebody's pro. And well, you know what? On there. But I, 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 guess I, I don't people. have a problem with that. I, I, and I think in the beginning you have thirty-five thousand candidates. Well, they all get one minute a day or something. Make a set some guidelines out, and the TV stations provide this time. The radio stations provide this time. There is no give us five hundred thousand dollars and we'll run your ad thirty-seven times a day. They get one minute a day, period. If you can't get your message across in one minute a day for 30 days, you know what? Get off the boat. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't belong there. And, and I just, th there has to be some kind of happy medium that, that we can, a as a people, come to in, in regards to this to, to maybe get rid of, I, I mean, this decision, I don't know if anybody caught the decision yesterday about the corruption with that governor, but they kind of opened the door wide open to, Okay, let, let me take your $5,000. I'm going to pass a bill for you. I'll get your bill on the floor. That is what's going on in Congress right now. And with that Supreme Court decision yesterday, I mean, that guy was taking money from people, making appointments to meet somebody to sell his product. I'm sorry, but that's using your position uh, of 
that's a textbook definition of graft. So maybe the charge against him for corruption was wrong, and it should have been graft. I don't know, because the Supreme Court, uh, if I'm not mistaken, said they needed narrower scope. And perhaps that's what they were driving at. They didn't come right out and say that. But, uh, I mean, the definition of graft is using a political position to for financial gain. And, and I, every single one of these people is doing this, and it's blatant. It has become so blatant. I mean, President Obama has received $23,750 from Monsanto. Well, I, I'm sorry. I know yeah. you're saying it, and it's, it's wrong that they do it, but... I, it's not going to be any different. I mean, you know, it's like these yeah. are the people that get caught. And, they, because, and Monsanto's <laughs> given that much to everybody. I mean, yeah, be real. I mean, Monsanto's going to do it. I mean, I know some people here that are lobbyists. I've uh, sat down and had drinks with them uh, several times. And, uh, and I'll tell you, they will lobby anything for anybody for money. That's what they do. That's what they do. Yeah. And, you know, hey, Milton, perhaps that's... Uh, 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 part of the ills of the political system and structure. Perhaps lobbying needs to be taken out of Washington, D.C., so our, our elected officials can actually focus on what's going on, not well, what somebody wants. Actually, and that's what a lobbyist is. This Aaron, is what we want. Aaron, I, I got a question for you. Because the government is supposed to be accessible, right? Who has mm -hmm. more access accessibility to them? Me? Not me. Or you or Dennis? Or Susie, who's got more? No, the, the guy that's sitting in their office lobbying. The, and, guy, and that, the that. guy that's taking the secretary out to dinner. The guy that's, uh, you know, like taking or sending her family off because it's not illegal to send her family on a vacation. You know, the gate, the gatekeepers are the ones that get lobbied to get these in there. And the common citizen can't do it, and that's just the way government you know, is. And you and I know, Jim, that it's not just Washington. No, it's... It comes it's, right down to the local and city it's, it's level. It's on every level. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen it, and yeah, sometimes it does persuade you if they give you a little bit more information than what's brought up during the hearing. Well, usually it's before the hearing, but uh, yeah, I mean, you have some, yeah. you have more information about the project. Okay, let, let let me pose this question to you. You you, you said you've been lobbied, I guess is the term here, or the uh, the adjective, or whatever. But Lugged. they 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 basically come try to convince you, and if it. When I write an article, I try to offer information, and sometimes it's very slanted because it's my view. But sometimes. for the most part, I try to offer information out there so you can make a decision on, is this something I want to do? Is this a company I want to work with? And stuff like that. I could see lobbying if the people offered facts. But everything is always slanted in a direction, and that's it the is. problem I have when you start talking lobbying on a major level like we're talking in Washington when these people start spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. I, 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 it, it, maybe it the happens. rule should be you're allowed one lobbyist. Uh, uh, Monsanto has like 37 of them in Washington, D.C. Perhaps they should only be allowed one. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, well, there has to be a way to trim this and, and make it a, a, a little more feasible for what's going on because at, at this at, I'm starting to see scuttlebutt in conversations, uh, from, you know, and I use the term we the people all the time, and I'm talking, when I say that, the public at large, I'm starting to see commentary in, in discussion threads that is turning violent. It's, you know what, we need to take this country back. We need to do this. We yeah, need to do this. That, and, and it's that. not, uh, 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 and I mean, and it's progressively getting more and more and more to the tipping point, uh, uh, if you will, that then it's just somebody, you know, spouting off some rhetoric, uh, uh, trying to vent a little bit in a public forum. Well, at any time, People are starting to get angry. Anytime you take it to an extreme like that, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to I'm gonna go a little bit different the other way. Um, you know, J Jim and I served a lot of years on a lot of boards and commissions. And I have met with every, at least every lobbyist in this area several, several times. times. Yeah. I mean, some, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes together. I mean, sometimes Jim and I would set it up so we'd meet the meet the same guy and have lunch together or whatever. Now, most of the time in those meetings, I learned something I didn't know. Now, 
it may have been something that uh, they wanted me to learn. Uh, it may have been something that the other side didn't want me to know, but I learned it, and I was more ready for the uh, for the public hearing and more the informed. Vote. More informed. And it wasn't a closed meeting. And I and I'm going to say this, Aaron. Anyone out there, that, and there's probably a few that are unscrupulous, but it wouldn't matter if it was a lunch or a McDonald's hamburger or whatever it was. It did not buy my vote. It no. never, ever, ever did. And sometimes we, Jim and I would go to the same lunch, and he would vote the wrong way, and I would vote the right way. And we've been, <laughs> fr we've been friends for, for a long time. And, you know, it would happen that way. You know, we would come, come away with our opinions, and... One of us might support something. One of us might oppose the the same project. So I don't think I don't think people um, locally, statewide, well, nationally, are inherently evil or dishonest. No, it's or just crooked. it's just the way the business works, and it's up to you to interpret it. And you have to. And if you're elected or appointed, it's your job to sort through the crap. Now, Dennis, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Do you remember the Las Vegas uh, planning seminars? Oh, sure. That we yeah. went down there, and do you remember the people that took us out to that wonderful dinner? Well, which? Oh, uh, at a fancy uh, golf, club, golf course. Okay. Do you and, remember that? Yeah. And, you remember the dinner? Yeah. And? <laughs> and. Do you remember what they were pushing on us? No. I, you know, I, I don't remember don't. a thing about it, and I don't think I they know. had anything coming up for the council. I know the food was good. The, the wine was the great. The trip was, well, I don't drink. Yeah, but, but you watched everybody else. <laughs> yeah, everybody wine. else did, and <laughs> yeah. the girls were pretty. But, you know, and, and, you know that, that's the closest thing that I've ever come to it, as to be treated like an elected official. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and and I and I was elected out in Lyon County. I mean, yeah. I was chairman of the town of the town board for well, two terms. Well, no, I'm just talking about Reno. But in, like, but in Reno, you know, yeah, and it, it it happens. But I don't see. I don't. I don't think ever was I put in a position that I felt like I was trying to be bought. Um, no, but well, I take that back. Yeah. One, maybe one time. Maybe once or twice. Maybe one time. Yeah, but. Uh, it, it happens. But I voted no on that. I mean, yeah. I, they, you know, they told me and, you know, this and that, and, you know, well, well, let's meet, up and, up, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I went, uh, okay, thank you for the information, but no, yeah. no thank you. And I was opposed to it. And, 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 then, and then I actually, some of the other things that would do is the lobbyists would actually come into the uh, the back room of the planning commission sometimes. The conference, yeah. Into the conference chambers. room. Chambers. And they mm -hmm. come back into chambers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there's all sorts of stuff out there, and that depends upon who is in the, who is going to be the most legitimate in, the, uh, in a position. Now, I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but don't they classify lobbying, quote-unquote, lobbying un, under the First Amendment as freedom of speech? Yep. And that's how it's been allowed to get so far out of hand of... Uh, because they, they claim it's freedom of speech. Yep, it's all very smooth, and you know, it's, it, they're they're people that uh, I guess they call shakers and makers. So if they if if they were to adjust the rules a little bit, to you can lobby, but you can't take them out to dinner, or you can't buy them something, or you well, can't nothing, do over, something. nothing over a hundred bucks. If, yeah. if, if they were to take that out of the equation. Then it might be uh, I could see different, even though there's a, a financial limit put on it, uh, that they're they're still kind of spending money to try to persuade. Uh, I, I mean, they're they're all going for they're, take, they're all going for FaceTime. You know, I, I mean, I when somebody wants to take me somewhere and they're a salesperson, I already know what's going on. And basically, a lobbyist is a salesman. Or a woman. It, that's that's yeah. it. And there's no free lunches. There's no free country club visits. There's no free golf. There's nothing. Well, you're, you're there gonna, for a reason. You're there for a reason. No doubt. And if you're going to play golf while you're talking about it, that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our limits were a hundred bucks or hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Nothing greater than a hundred dollars. But you know, you could argue that a conference was more. But you know, we had to do certain things to keep to remain as commissioners. Yeah. And you know, there there were things that you had that you have to do and and. But I, I don't. I really don't have an issue with that. I, there's nothing to keep anyone from uh, coming down and every day 
knocking on a door and saying, hi, I'm Aaron, and this is what I believe in. I mean, if if that's what you want to do, make appointments and do that. I, I think that is as productive as blogging and writing and doing anything but, but, else. But what I think Aaron's saying is that, and what I am saying, mm -hmm. is that the lobbyists have more access to Congress, the Senate, or whoever. Well, because they're there. Then because the they're there. Then, that, then the constituents. Well. So therefore, it's a lobbyist. You know, I guess you'd have to have... I don't think they have any more or any less. I but think they've the, got more access. Only because they're there. But yeah. anyone else can be there, too. I mean, if you, and if you have a... Now, an, a, a theoretically, group, though, a, a lobbyist, and let's take all... Uh, I mean, there's 37 of them for Monsanto in Washington, D.C. Those people have to be making a salary. Well, you know what? Nobody goes and does that for nothing. It's not all 37 people are talking to the same 37 no, people. they've got their own groups. No. Each one yeah. of them is hammering on a different mm -hmm. side. And once in a while, they'll say, okay, 37, let's take your key players, your face people, and let's take them and put them face-to-face -face and see if we can get everything on the same page. Yeah. And there's nothing to keep the Sierra Club from doing the same thing, which they do. They do, do. yeah. The National Rifle Association, <laughs> which, which they, they do. do. Uh, the Food Growers of yeah. America, the which unions they do. do yeah. the United Auto Workers, Organic which they Consumers do. Organic Consumers Association, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I just... the, the difference in what you're saying is money. If they can afford to do it, they do it. If other people can't afford to do it, they can't do it. But they still have the right to do it. I mean, if the money is the issue, well, then form a group, raise money, and get enough capital and do that. That's I, I, I don't see how cutting people off that can afford the lobby helps anywhere. I just don't well, see I, that. Maybe not so much on the lobby issue, but perhaps that. 7500 bucks that goes into a campaign fund and oh by the way now you're going to put something on the floor for a vote for us that favors us that is where i start having a serious problem with what's going on in washington no. so you start the only thing you can do is the money yep. and their actions in congress that is textbook graft that's the definition of graft well, right there it's, no. it's not not in my opinion and believe me i am of the philosophy that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah. But you elect someone. Well, you elect somebody. You elect someone and contribute to their campaign because they feel the same way politically that you do. Monsanto doesn't elect anybody. They finance the campaigns. Well, they, they, they They're do. not electing anybody. No, they I'm don't sure even have a vote. They, no, they don't, but they're controlling it by what you're saying, the graph well, process. Yeah, they're providing the money to do the campaign. That's yeah, they're, what they're, doing. they're doing it. And it's like if it's $7,500 per court, what is the highest uh, individual can give to um, a campaign, a person? An individual I think it's 5000 at one time. But it's now like 2500 or something? I thought it was 2500 per Or maybe individual. that's just for state. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's hard telling. And then I have to look into that. Uh, uh, that I, I just see... When, when Aaron, I start seeing the Aaron, amount Aaron, of money, Aaron, it's we're, time. Yeah, we're, we're running out of time. We're almost top of the hour. Interesting conversation, though. How do we get a hold of you quickly? 775-230-9915 on the telephone, on that World Wide Web, LLC Beads, etc. for products. Hey, whorehounds coming in. It's about time to harvest. Let's have a great day, folks. Let's all be safe out there. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay.